All right, so this video is going to go over function generators and oscilloscopes in Multisim. To start, we're going to need a function generator. So if we go to our our right-hand toolbar with all of our devices on it, uh, previously we used it to get a multimeter, which was the top button. If we go to the second button down, that's our function generator. So we'll go ahead and click that and then place our function generator. And then we'll go ahead to the same toolbar, uh, fourth button down, the oscilloscope. Place that somewhere. And finally, we'll, we'll get a ground reference. Remember that ground is located in the sources group under the power sources family. So to get there, I just went to the upper left toolbar there with the components and go to place source. Make sure it's, whoop, make sure it's set to the power sources family and we can pull a ground component there we can go ahead and place that so first I'm going to connect our our uh, reference voltage terminals so this common terminal on the function generator that's what we connect to our reference voltage in this case it's ground and then our oscilloscope we're going to be using channel A so I'm going to go ahead and take the negative terminal for channel A, connect that to our reference ground voltage. And now the positive terminal on the function generator is what's actually going to output the function voltages. So we're going to connect that to our positive scope terminal. The negative terminal on the function generator, that's really just used for um, generating the inverse function of whatever is output on the positive terminal. Um, we're really not going to be using that much, so I'm going to leave that alone for now, but that's just what that does. Um, so we'll be using just the positive terminal and the common terminal, and they would be connected like this. We want to we connect it directly to the scope just because we want to uh, see the raw output of this function generator. And to see that, we can double click the oscilloscope and that'll bring up the scope window you can resize it however you want if I go ahead and run the simulation now uh, the default settings for the function generator are being used uh, we haven't changed those yet so down here at the bottom of this window the scope window there's your time base section and then your, you have your channel A, channel B uh, in the time base section we can change our time scaling um, right now it's at 10 milliseconds per division and divisions being just these grid lines here so one division would be be uh, you know grid line to grid line that's one division right now it's set to 10 milliseconds per division so we can actually crank that up to let's say 500 milliseconds per division and if I go ahead and uh, pause the simulation you can get a look at this signal so if I just take two points um, on this signal uh, to measure the distance between uh, let's say this peak here and the next peak um, this distance here, which is one full cycle of the signal, uh, the distance here is two divisions, one and two. So one full cycle of this signal is two divisions at 500 milliseconds per division, so we know that this is a 1,000 millisecond or one second uh, period for this uh, particular signal, meaning that it has a one hertz frequency. And then in terms of voltage, we can see that peak to peak, uh, our, our low point here is negative two divisions, you know, two divisions below the zero axis. And then our high point here is two divisions of uh, above our zero axis. So from this low point to the high point, that's four total divisions times five volts per division. That's 20 volts uh, from this low point here to the high point. So 
Uh, and then you can also change uh, your voltage scaling up and down. So we can just set it to, let's just say 10 volts per division. And now that same 20 volts still shown here from the low point to the high point is now two divisions, but it's at 10 volts per division, 10 times two, 20 volts. So now going to the function generator, generator itself to adjust the settings. If I double click the function generator, it'll bring up this little window. And so we can select from different waveforms. If I go ahead and run the simulation, uh, we can switch to a triangle wave, we can switch to a square wave, or back to a sine wave. The frequency we can change here to, let's just say double. And now you can see the, the wave is uh, oscillating at twice the frequency. Uh, for the amplitude, we're going to come back to duty cycle in a second, but for the amplitude, we measured it to be 20 volts from the from peak to peak, meaning from the low to the high point. But it says 10 here, and that's because this is really what it, what that number is saying is we have 10 volts from z from our zero point up to our highest voltage is 10 volts. So, and and uh, conversely, the the point. Uh, the, the voltage from zero to our lowest point is also 10 volts or well negative 10 volts but that's what this number is representing so just keep that in mind when you're setting this number this number is essentially doubled in terms of uh, peak to peak voltage you know from the lowest to the highest voltage is technically a 20 volt span or double what you have in this amplitude box the offset just shifts the signal up and down uh, so I can go ahead and run the simulation some more and if I set the offset to 10 volts we see it shift up by 10 volts and then if we were to set it to negative 10 volts we would see it shift down so I'll go ahead and set that back to zero and now to uh, duty cycle um, sine waves don't have duty cycles uh, they are a consistent shape. Um, the only thing that affects the shape of a sine wave is the frequency and the amplitude. Other than that, it's, it's you know, it's all um, pretty constant. But triangle waves and square waves have duty cycles, and um, I think uh, duty cycles are covered later in the, uh, in the material, um, but essentially it just controls how wide these, these uh, for a square wave, how wide the peak voltage is. So if I pause the simulation, duty cycle is just going to change how wide this top part is of, of this of each cycle, and how narrow the low parts are. And you'll see that when I change this to let's say eighty percent, now we can see that the peaks are very wide, the lows are very narrow. And if I go the opposite direction, 20%, now the peaks are very narrow and the lows are wide. For a, let me set that back to 50, for a triangle wave, it just affects how skewed, um, you'll see what I mean when I change this, how skewed the, the triangle is left or right. So if I set this to 80%, now you can see it's kind of skewed to the right. So the, the signal is rising for a, a longer amount of time than it's falling. And then if I go the opposite direction, the opposite happens. Now it's skewed left. So now it's rising for a very short amount of time and then taking a while to fall back down. So that's all that duty cycle does. It kind of just changes the shape of triangle and square waves. And then in terms of, so I'm gonna have to stop the simulation. Um, in terms of rise and fall time, uh, so the set rise fall time button. Rise and fall time is, let me just get a square wave back on the screen. Um, and then we'll go ahead and pause it. 
So rise and fall time just means how long does it take to go from this low point here up to the high point. That's rise time. Fall time is how long it takes to go from high to low. So right now it's set to 10 nanoseconds, which is a very, very, very short interval. And because our time scaling is so large, 500 milliseconds per division, we don't really see a, a rise or fall difference. I mean, it, it looks like just a vertical line. Um, if we were to increase this to, let's say, eh, let's try 100 uh, milliseconds. Now you can see it's much more pronounced. It's taking um, 100 total milliseconds to go from this from this low point to the high point, and then it's taking 100 milliseconds to go from the high point down to the low point. So we'll just change that back to 10 nanoseconds. And now it's back to being basically vertical. So that is how you manipulate the function generator. Uh, so I believe the, the lab calls for uh, Lab. Um, this uh, lab here, lab one, uh, calls for a zero to five volt pulse and a 500 ohm resistor. Uh, so for that pulse, we would set our function generator to, and it doesn't specify frequency, so I mean, you could just make it whatever. Uh, two hertz is fine. Um, probably makes it easier to see the uh, makes it easier to track the um, signal. The duty cycle um, is not specified either, so I, uh, I mean, and for the most part, we are going to be using just fifty percent, nice even square wave. Um, the amplitude, it, it does say that it needs to be 0 to 5 volts pulse, meaning it's a pulse that goes from 0 volts to 5 volts, then back down to 0, then back up to 5. So the way we're going manipul to these, manipulate these numbers is by using amplitude and offset to do that. So when it says 0 to 5 volts, the amplitude we're actually going to set to half of that peak that we wanted, right? 2.5 volts, actually. Because we want the total distance from the low point to the high point to be 5 volts. And actually, you go ahead and change our scaling, voltage scaling as well, to let's just say 2 volts per division so we can see that better. And uh, actually, no, let's make it an even 5 volts per division. And so you can see the, uh, the waveform is now 5 volts from the lowest point to the highest point. And now let's change the offset because we don't want it to go from negative 2.5 to 2.5. We want to go from 0 to 5. So we're going to have to offset it by another 2.5 volts. And that will give us our 0 to 5 volt oscillating signal. So that is how we use the function generators and uh, how we use the scopes.